If you're looking for cloud architect interview questions, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs, and I've been working in technology for over 25 years, and I've been working in networking, security, and cloud computing, and I've been coaching others or mentoring others for over 20 years. And today we're gonna to talk about cloud architect interview questions. So why are we going to be talking about questions on an interview? So the real thing is, as a hiring manager, when we hire someone, we need to make sure they can do the following things. We need to make sure they can do the job. We need to make sure the candidate is trustworthy. We need to see if the candidate can speak and present themselves well. We want to see if the candidate responds to things with a level of emotional intelligence because we look for people that have higher levels of emotional intelligence. We look for someone's attitude. We really want a good positive attitude and we want to see if they can bring value to our team. So in order to do this, we have to ask a set of technical questions. And the way you respond to these questions will let us know your levels of technical competency, communication skills, collaboration skills, empathy, and your soft skills. So that's why we ask a series of questions. So we'll ask a series of technical questions and non-technical questions. Today, we're going to focus on technical questions. We're going to give you five technical questions we commonly ask on Cloud Architect interviews. And these questions will tell us whether someone's competent or not competent. And it's very important to practice and have a large set of prepared answers to common questions because it's not that you're really preparing per a question per se, you're making sure you have enough understanding of the technology to answer the questions and that's gonna make you a better cloud architect. So there's about 50 questions that we routinely ask people on cloud architect interviews. And over the next eight weeks, we will have one video per week and we will dedicate this video to asking you cloud architect interview questions. We'll ask at least five questions every week. So by the end of the eight weeks, you'll have gotten your, our 50 favorite best interview questions that you're likely to encounter in a cloud architect interview. So the first question we like to ask people is, how can you scale a relational database? Now, why am I asking that question? The reason I'm asking that question, for one thing, is I want to see if the client actually knows what a relational database even is. And can they separate that from their favorite branded database that they heard about in their certification training? The next thing I want to know is I want to know if they ask me, what is your traffic like? Is it read traffic or is it write traffic? Because if it's all write traffic, they're adding read replicas, for example, isn't going to make a difference. And if the constraint is actually write traffic, then adding a queuing system will make the difference. So I want to see if this potential cloud architect can actually ask the right questions. And if they ask the question, what is the type of traffic that's being used by your database? And I say it's a combination of read and write. I'm looking for someone that can say, okay, then you can take a fault of multiple steps. Since a lot of your traffic is read, you can create read replicas and you can offload the read work to the read replicas, which will free up resources on the master database. And then if they say you can further reduce load on read replicas by adding some caching, then I, I'd say, okay, great. Now they know two ways to really substantially reduce read load. And then if they say, in order to reduce write load or smooth out the write load so you don't have peaks and valleys, you can use a queuing system, then I know this cloud architect really understands how relational databases work. That's why I asked that question. My questions are always gonna be open-ended because I need to see if they're competent. The next question I'm gonna ask people is what is virtualization? How does it work? And why would you use it? And then I asked that question and the reason I'm asking that question is all the compute instances that you see in the cloud are virtual machines. So I want to know if someone has any concept of how the cloud is built. I want to know that they understand that an instance is nothing more than a virtual machine. And I want to know that they've actually set up virtualization before because it's really hard to design something if you're not sure what it is. So I want them to be able to tell me virtualization is when you take a bare metal server add a hypervisor and the hypervisor logically partitions your physical hardware. So basically you can create multiple logical computers inside of a computer and each logical computer will have its own operating system and you'll be able to set the memory, the CPU resources and other matters. If a client can tell me that on in an interview, I'm very interested in them. Why? Because they know how the cloud works or at least how virtualization works. See, the cloud is nothing more than a virtualized network in a data center. And if you don't understand the data center and you don't understand the network, it's very hard to actually build cloud solutions. So I'm gonna ask these architecture infrastructure questions of cloud architects and many, many, many other people will do the same on an interview. 
The next thing that I'm going to ask the person is what is the difference between block storage and object storage? I'm going to ask how they work and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each, as well as some use cases. We have to ask these questions because we need to know if the candidate understands storage. What good are all the compute instances in the world if you don't have a place to store your data and you don't have a place where you can use the data? So I need to know, do they understand what block storage is and where to use it and what object storage is and where to use it? And then I need them to tell me how, why you would use them. I need them to tell me that if you need storage on a virtual machine that doesn't go away with reboot, you're going to use something like block storage because it's designed for that. And if you've got a static website or you want to distribute software, you're going to use something like object storage because it's designed for that. If you're going to create a data lake, for example, you're going to use object storage because it has that metadata. And if you, but if you need higher performance storage, you're going to use block storage in a compute instance. So I need people to tell me that. And if they tell me that, I know they're a great cloud architect hire. And if they just tell me that, Object storage is S3. I know they're certified, but I know they can't do the job as an architect. So that's why we're going over these cloud architect interview questions so that you can learn these questions and then you can learn the technology so you can be a fantastic cloud architect. The next question I get will tell me if someone has any knowledge of networking or not. I ask people, what is NAT and why would you use it? If someone tells me that NAT is how you connect to the internet, I know they have no knowledge of basic networking whatsoever, but they have passed an AWS certification exam and they know the meaning of a NAT instance and a NAT gateway. But without understanding NAT, you will run into large numbers of challenges as a cloud architect, so I have to ask this question. I need them to tell me that NAT is, a for, is what's called network address translation, and it's really about translating one address into another address. Now, it could be used to connect a private address to the internet by translating it into a public address, or it could also be used if there's two organizations, for example, that uh, just merged and they're using the same overlapping IP address space until the addresses can be changed between the organizations, you would use NAT and you would translate one private address into another private address, but something that's not overlapping. So if someone can tell me what NAT actually is and some use cases, and I've given you two, but there's many more, I know they understand basic networking and basic networking is required to be a cloud architect. So the last question that we'll cover today is I ask people what is meant by stateful when it comes to a firewall or an AWS security group. This will tell me if the person has any knowledge of stateful firewalls or any knowledge of security or any knowledge of what's called state. Why does it matter? Because if you're going to design a security architecture, you must understand stateful firewalls. If they tell me that because it's stateful, you only need to apply it in one direction. I know they don't understand statefulness, but they learned that on an AWS exam, for example. If they tell me that state is when you initiate a connection and it goes through the firewall on the way out to the internet, the finer wall looks at your connection and it tracks what you've done. And because it knows once you go to the web server, because you initiated the connection to allow your return traffic back through the firewall because you you went, originated that traffic from the safe side of the network. So stateful means it knows what's going on on the direct going out and therefore it can allow it back in or it knows that what's coming in is allowed to go back out because it's tracking the state of the connection. And knowing what stateful means, meaning tracking the state of the connection or watching the flow and allowing return traffic thereafter because it knows and understands all that's going on with the traffic flow between the sender and the recipient, that's stateful. So. What are, what are we all talking about at the end of the day? When you're on an interview, your, your goal is to show the hiring manager you are capable. And let the hiring know that you know far more than just simply the name of an AWS or a GCP service. Let them know that you understand how the technology works and it will help you get hired every time. Show the hiring manager that you understand the architecture by answering these questions in a way that prove that you understand the strengths and the weaknesses of each technology and why you would use them. Because what does an architect do? They design a solution to solve a customer challenge. And you have to understand the technology in order to design solutions. It's, so show the hiring manager this. Be able to tell the hiring manager about any technology they ask you in the following manner. What is the technology? How does the technology work? And why you would use it? Do this and you will prove to the hiring manager that you're in the top 10th of 1% and you will be hired and you will get paid more and you will have a wonderful cloud computing career. Let me tell you about some free offerings our organization does to help the cloud architect community. 
Every Monday and every Thursday, we have a free how to get your first cloud architect job. On this webinar, we spend one hour and we teach you what hiring managers desire. We teach you what to do with your resume. We teach you how to get exposure. We teach you how to not get stuck in HR when they're looking for experience that you don't have. And we teach you what to do in order to get your first cloud architect job. We have these calls on Monday and Thursday. The link in, is in the description below. On every Tuesday, starting at 9 a.m., we have a how to get real hands-on experience webinar. During this webinar, we talk about how to get real Cloud Architect hands-on experience, something that will dazzle hiring managers with your knowledge, something that will give you so much experience, you'll be able to pass any certification exam you desire, and you'll be able to show to the hiring manager they need to hire you because you're that good. We hold these calls every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The next thing I'd like to tell you about is if you're working on AWS certification, more specifically the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Exam, we have a free ebook and it's a comprehensive ebook and it's literally everything you need to pass the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Exam. It's completely free and I'll drop a link in the description below. It's a book we wrote to help the cloud architect community. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in another video next Wednesday. Take care.